Today, the time has finally come to switch to lithium. Let's get started. What's up, everybody? Welcome to Freely Roaming. My name is Dan. So two years ago, a little over two years ago, about two and a half years ago, when we started building our Sprinter van, we decided that we're going to stick with lead acid AGM batteries for the time being because at the time batteries lithium batteries were still very expensive they were becoming more popular and a lot of people had already switched back then I wouldn't necessarily call the people that switched to lithium early adopter because the technology has already been very mature it's just that the prices were still very high because for a long long time lithium batteries specifically the ones that I'm going to show you today lithium iron phosphates were exclusively used in industrial applications like backup generators for cell phone towers uh, telecommunication devices was a very popular place where these were used because usually they're unmanned and they had to be running 24 7 regardless of power outages and they had a really long lifetime so a lot of people were taking the technology and the products that were created in the telecom industry and repurposing them because they worked really well for 12 volt application. At the time, two years ago, to get a 100 amp hour battery was gonna cost you about a thousand dollars. And that is um, sort of a, a drop-in replacement that was built by a battery manufacturer designed to be used in an RV or boat or some kind of 12 volt replacement application. Now those prices are still pretty much the same. They've come down a little bit. I think a uh, Battleborn battery back then was about $1,000 and now you can get them for about eight, dollars $900. And there's other competition that have come online that sell batteries in that size range for that type of chemistry for about six to $700 for 100 amp hours, which is really great. That's come down about 20 to 30%. And in some cases, even more depending on the quality. But where lithium iron phosphate batteries have really thrived is in the DIY world. A lot of companies have come out with DIY kits that allows you to build your own lithium iron phosphate batteries. They're not necessarily any different than the ones that you would have found before. It's just that there's so much competition now. So many people are adopting and seeing the benefit of lithium batteries. You can get them for really, really cheap. Two and a half years ago, when we built our van, instead of going and spending the money and buying lithium components or buying a ready-built lithium battery, we decided for the time being to go with AGM, and we went with VMAX. We went with these six-volt VMAX AGM batteries that had a 225 amp hour capacity, and they were $280 each. They're still $280 each. The prices on AGM batteries haven't changed. They've already been around for decades and they are at probably as low of price as they're going to be and there's even a chance I think for lead acid batteries to go up in price kind of like you know digital cameras have replaced film cameras and film prices have gone up because there's less demand so we paid almost six hundred dollars for a pair of two batteries and that is because it's AGM lead acid, we only get to use about 50% depth of discharge for this battery chemistry. So it was only about a 112 amp hour usable. So it was still cheaper at the time. 112 for $600 was still cheaper than 100 amp hours of lithium at $1,000. But fast forward two and a half years. Now, let me just show you what I got. These aluminum cased lithium iron phosphate cells. And this is 280 amp hours. This is a 280 amp hour cell, and I got four of these. And with four of these at a nominal voltage of 3.2, when you serial connect four of these together, you get a perfect 12 volt replacement. It has a nominal voltage of 12.8, which is exactly what you want. For four of these, you can buy them on AliExpress. You can actually buy them on Amazon too. I'll put some links down in the description. You can get these for less than $100 a piece. And since you need four of these, it'll cost you about between $350 and $400, depending on what you buy them. Now, which one and what 
supplier you buy these from is really important because you want to make sure you're buying brand new cells. Even though these look brand new, you still have to be really careful. You have to make sure that they're serialized, that they have this QR code you can scan and find the, the actual information about each of these cells. You want to visually inspect them. You want to make sure that they are well matched. When you get four of these cells, it's really important to make sure that these four cells that you're getting are of the same manufacturing date or of the same batch. Because lithium, unlike lead acid, for lack of a better word, they are they're more fragile, meaning that you have to take better care of them. Lithium batteries, they require a lot more complexity in the operations. That's probably the number one biggest downside. They can't be used in really cold situations and they have to be really well balanced. They can be damaged if you overcharge or undercharge them. Of course, you can do that with lead acid too, but with uh, lithium batteries, the damage is much more severe and depending on the chemistry, you could have thermal runoff, which can cause fires and extreme heat and sometimes injury and possibly death if you're not careful. I was really happy to get these. I'll tell you guys where I got it from with the link below, but because I'm here in Europe right now, it was a little bit more expensive for me to get them, but I felt like the time was right. The time was right to get lithium batteries to replace my two and a half year old existing AGMs, even though those AGMs still have probably, because I take care of them, I never let them go too far, too far down in the discharge cycle, and I never overcharge them. And I use a really high quality MPPT charge controller to make sure that they're charged properly. They probably have another five to seven years of life left. But the advantages of going lithium iron phosphate is that they're gonna be less than half of the weight for the same amount of usable amperage. These are gonna give me 280 amp hours, which compared to my 225 amp hour lead acid, these are going to have more than double the capacity. And they will, at the end of the day, they will probably just slightly lighter, not significantly lighter, maybe 60, 70% of the weight of my current two lead acid batteries. The recommended range for these battery is to never discharge them to less than 10% and never charge them to over 90%. So I have about 80% of usable range safely because you also wanna take care of these. So 280, amp hours between 10% depth of discharge to 90% depth of discharge, you're looking at 224 usable amps. And that is actually almost exactly doubling what my AGM, because my AGM is rated at 225 amp hours, and I'm able to use half of that. So I'm doubling the usable capacity, and I'm at lower weight. Not exactly how much lower is gonna be yet, but we'll find out when this is all assembled. I've got some other parts I wanna show you that I'm gonna to use to put this battery together, and I'll go through just briefly what each of them are. And there's gonna be a follow-up series of build videos that'll show you exactly how I put them together, how I drop it into the existing battery location, and how it all hooks up to the existing system that's currently using AGMs. So let me show you how this battery came. I'm gonna take three of these cells out that I've already open and show you they each came individually packaged actually the four cells came in a big box like this I was really impressed at how well it was packaged as you can tell the corners are even reinforced so they don't dent as easily but I was wondering why they only did three corners and not this fourth one maybe they just forgot but fortunately for me there was no damage to the box at all. Inside the box, it was again well padded with nice thick foam all the way around. And also this thick foam was used in between each individual cell when it came packaged. And each battery again came in its own box. And when you open it, they're each individually foam padded once again on all sides. And that's what one of them looks like. Besides the four cells, I also got five 
really thick copper bus bars. They're nickel plated copper bus bars to prevent corrosion. They're really nice and thick. They're nice and thick. You can tell they're copper with nickel plating. It's really nice and thick. The way that I'm gonna connect them, which is four in series, I'm only gonna need three. So I have two extra ones. They give you five just in case you want to connect them in parallel. Depending on how you plan on configuring them, you may wanna purchase or ask for more bus bars, which you can do. When you order them, just say, hey, look, this is how I'm gonna configure it. I'm gonna need X number of bus bars. So if it doesn't come with enough, you can buy it from them. And also, it comes with the hardware, which are just stainless bolts and washers that lets you connect them to the top. One of the downsides I've heard about these cells is that the terminals are not particularly strong and they can be stripped, so you have to be a little bit careful. But upon close examination, there are no dents, there's no damage to any of these cells. And I did do a voltage test. They're, they all come in at about 3.2 volts and they're very closely balanced, so I'm really happy about that. You can find these for under $100 a piece, which means between to buy four of them, you can have them for less than $400. I've seen listings on AliExpress for a batch of 16 of these for as low as $1,200, which is an unbelievably low price. So that is actually cheaper than what I paid for my AGM batteries at double the capacity. But that's not the whole story because even though you can just connect these cells together and use them right away, over time, when they're new, it's not a big problem. It's rarely that they'll go out of balance if they come with a match set from the same manufacturer. Over time, as they age, they can go out of balance. And that's why I need the battery management system. And the battery management system I chose is, is this one. This is the Dali Common Port 4S 12 volt BMS. And it's rated for 120 amps. So the way that you set this one up is you connect your cells together and then you connect a negative to the BMS and then this other negative that comes out of the BMS becomes the negative that goes to your system. So this battery management system will monitor your individual cells voltage to make sure they don't go out of balance. And if they do go out of balance, this is a BMS that has a balancing feature that will try to automatically balance them. Because what happens when your cells go out of balance is that as you charge them or discharge them, the charger can only see the overall voltage of the entire pack. And the charger is going to attempt to charge them to a certain voltage. And if one cell has a higher voltage than the other one, then they're gonna come up together when the low one is not fully charged yet, the other one that's overcharged because it started out unbalanced and higher, you're gonna end up damaging the cell that has the higher voltage. And the same goes for discharging. When you discharge batteries, if one is higher, if one cell is higher voltage and the other one is lower voltage, as you discharge them, the battery is going to discharge to a certain voltage, overall voltage, before they stop. And what will happen is that the one with the lower voltage, the lowest voltage, is going to get far below its recommended lowest voltage setting, and you'll damage that battery. So it's important to make sure your battery, or your cells, are balanced. And that's what this is going to do. And sometimes people will say, well, you know, BMSs are good at cutting off charging and discharging when it senses some kind of trouble. Um, they don't do a very good job at balancing. I think this one will. This one is pretty heavy duty. But I also got just an active cell balancer. This is kind of a controversial product. A lot of people say you don't need it. And some people say, hey, you know, what's the hurt of having one? Well, we'll see. I picked one up just to check out to see if it's worthwhile trying. So I will put this system together within the next few weeks and test it out and get back to you guys on just exactly what I think of it. So I have just about everything that I need to start putting this lithium battery pack together. For me, with all the stuff that I ordered, it cost me a lot more to have it sent to Europe where I currently am right now. But if you're ordering this from the US, these four cells, you can buy them for about $380. 
In this BMS, you can buy different sizes. I chose to go with one that's rated at 120 amps because I'm not gonna go over that. 120 amps, that's about 1500 watts of output. There's nothing in my van that draws 1500 watts. Not yet anyways. Maybe I'll have to upgrade this when I decide to switch to induction cooking. But even at 1500 watts, you can get most of your cooking done on a lower setting of an induction cooktop and still be able to use this. The newer version of this also has a Bluetooth port. Mine does not. I think that Bluetooth model just came out. You can buy one with a Bluetooth output and a Bluetooth dongle that lets you check all your data from the BMS, individual cell voltage, overall cell voltage, um, the different errors that it's producing through a mobile app, which is pretty cool. But unfortunately, when I bought this a month ago, it wasn't available yet. You can buy one of those for about 90 to $100, depending on if you get the Bluetooth module or not. BMS, lithium cells, you can get everything that you need to build your own lithium battery today for less than $500, which is pretty amazing because that's less than what I paid for my AGM batteries two and a half years ago. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I wanted to show you guys my next project and if you guys want to see exactly how this battery is going to go together and how it's going to be installed in our van, don't forget to subscribe down below. If you have any questions, ask them in the comments. And as always, thanks for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one.